All right, good morning, everybody. It's morning for me, as always. I get up and I have these things I want to get off my mind. Um, I wanted to do something really quick about weight map painting for uh, the physics, cloth physics, because um, I'm doing a lot of it, and I wanted to show you a couple things that I know, and I'm no expert by any means, but these might help you in the future. So first of all, I have this dress here. I want to put uh, some some cloth physics on it. One of the reasons you want to put cloth physics, I mean, this dress is not the kind of dress that would normally uh, flow. You know, it would not normally just kind of sail down. See how it's all kind of, I don't know what you want to call that, kind of pumped up. If I understand correctly, these dresses have like petticoats underneath them or something. I don't, I don't know how women wear stuff. But, but I think that, uh, you know, after a half a century, I still don't understand it. But, but these, this dress wouldn't normally come down. It, it, it's poofed up, and, and it would stay poofed up. So you really won't need a lot of cloth physics. You say, well, I don't need the cloth physics on that. But the problem is, without cloth physics here, uh, as, as it moves, you, you can see that the, the movement isn't really natural. So it doesn't, see, it doesn't bend properly. The, it, you know, you can see how it's... It's all screwed up. That's because the weight maps on the legs are divided in the middle. So they don't, they don't really work properly. So in general, for almost any skirt or dress or anything that goes over the two limbs at the bottom, you really need some sort of cloth physics in iClone to make it look good when, when it deforms. So, so that's what we want to do here. And, and I want to show you that uh, how to do it here because it, it's not as straightforward. I think I, I've shown in some of my other videos how to do some cloth physics where you just draw on the on the UV map. So you, you get the, you go to the weight map here and then you use this. This is the UV reference. So you click on this and then what happens is, like one of these cooking shows again, it brings up over here on my other monitor, uh, it, it shows you, well, that's interesting. Didn't want that to do it. Okay, I'm not used to working with just one monitor. So it comes on with a UV map here, okay? And then you can paint your, your actual weights on this using gradients. The problem is, if you can see this skirt, it's, it's composed of a lot of layers. It has these four different layers. So yes, you could compose a, a UV map, but then you have to know, well, does the whole layer get it or just probably just the top? portion is black and I don't know it's just a pain so some and sometimes they're even more complicated than this so as a rule I've been getting away more and more from painting them directly in, in Photoshop and just doing them in uh, my 3d painting program I have a lot of 3d painting programs I have ZBrush I have substance painter the one I absolutely love is 3d coat and I, I promise you guys, you cannot go wrong buying this. I think it's under 100 bucks. I think you can buy it for like 79, the lowest end version, which is all you need. And this thing is amazing. And if nothing more, what you want to do is buy it because it will UV map things. And you can't do that in a lot of programs. Like Substance Painter won't even, won't even touch that. So uh, you can create great UV maps easily with this. But I like just 3D painting it. So... You can use your favorite 3D painting program to do what I'm going to do. But in any case, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to... Um, da, 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 da. I'm going to get here and import... And I, I'm getting, my cat doesn't like it when I, uh, when I talk. I'm going to actually close this down because I want to show you how this starts up. So when we start 3D Coat, it comes up and it gives you all these different possibilities of what to do. One of the things is this Paint UV Mesh, which is what we want to do. Okay. And then we grab the, the object. And this is the same object we exported uh, out of Daz in order to, um, you know, put into uh, Blender and then, and then bring in the character creator. So that's just that same OBJ. Uh, you, you could use the FBX if you wanted to, but it doesn't matter. Uh, the same OBJ. And as it loads up now, then the texture widths. Now for weight maps, you really don't need a very big texture. 512 is plenty. So I, I just use 512 um, because that's, unless, you're, unless your object is very, very detailed, you're not going to have that problem. Okay, so anyway, here's the, here's the dress. And the first thing I'm going to do is delete this top layer because I really don't need any coloration on this. I just need black and white, basically. And I'm going to, and my, my main color is black, so I'm going to come over here to this layer and I'm going to go fill the whole layer because I, I don't want things to move in general. Okay, when you paint it with white or, or lighter tones other than black, then things move. 
And then I'm going to come down and just grab uh, the gradient mode here, the fill, fill the gradient, and then change the, uh, the white to be down here, like that. And then I also kind of line this up. I want to have more of the white in the back than in the front, if that makes sense, because more, more of the butt will be moving. Uh, so something like that. And then see, I, I'm touching each one of these uh, different layers to fill in with that particular gradient. And uh, so that, that looks pretty good. That, that's, and you can see that's a whole lot easier than trying to paint uh, each one of those separations. Uh, it's also got these little, little thingies. I don't know what these things are, a little, some kind of little laces or something here. Um, but uh, let me get closer and see what this is. I don't remember what this is. Oh, that's right. It's got some little lace things. And I, I think I, I've done this before. I think I, uh, I did fill some of these with the uh, gradient as well. Let's get rid of that gradient off of that side. I don't think it's all that necessary, but I did it anyway. Okay, anyway, so um, so there, there you're done. And then at that point in time, then I'm just going to export this, uh, uh, give it a name of some sort. I'm not going to use any of these things. Testes is my, my standard name. And what this does is it's going to export all the different maps involved. So it exports uh, normals and all that sort of thing. But the only map I'm really interested in is the color map. So I want the color map there of the dress. Bring that in there. And that's, see, that's all that. So that was a whole lot easier than to try to try to do all that. Okay, so, except I didn't put it in the right thing. Hang on. Uh, 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 uh. It's got to be in the dress and not in the, uh, there we go. Dress part of it. There we go. Okay, much better. The other one is grommelets or something. I don't know what that other one is. And see, it takes a little longer because that uh, generates, and yes, I do want it. You'll get this message sometime if it has more than 20,000 polygons. I generally just ignore it. It doesn't really make any difference because modern computers can handle a lot more. Okay, so now I've got the weight map on here. And in order to test this, I want to bring this into iClone. So I export it. I think I showed this to you before in my other video about weighting it. But I want to show you one other thing about it that I don't think I demonstrated before, and I, uh, I want to show you how this comes in. It takes a little time. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so now it's in, and the first thing I, I think I, I'm pretty sure I did show you this before. I always load in these collision shapes because these are better collision shapes. And now if I, I have it by frame, because that's always the best way to go to get cloth physics, and if I play this, see, <laughs> see how this thing kind of melts down and you go, oh no, my painting was wrong. What did I do? Well, actually, no, that's, that's no problem. Uh, to fix that, you just go into the weight map here and we just lower the brightness, just lower it down a little bit. You know, it's, it's just a little bit too bright. And I don't really know what the science is behind all this. I just know that this works. So, and you can experiment with, the nice thing about it is you can leave this up and running while you run this. So, so now, now it looks fine. So it just kind of collapses down there. So that's fine. So just lowering a little bit. Now, of course, then once you've got this, you want to get the right whatever it is. And I don't know, it's probably, I want it to kind of not collapse as much as it did. Because like I said, this is more of a, of a tight thing. So I might even use leather here for the, for the thingy. I don't know what you're going to call it for the thingy. And then uh, to test it, we always want to put on, you know, some content. And so for Heidi, I usually use, or for a woman, I usually use Heidi and then use like her, her air dance or something. That's the, one of the common ones I do. And, uh, and then you display it. And then you can see that, uh, and, and you can see, I think that it, it moves a lot better in the middle now. See, it doesn't have that scrunchiness stuff up and, uh, and she looks fine. And then, you know, you can adjust this any way you want, but that's, that's basically all I wanted to show you is that I, I highly recommend, the guy that wrote 3D code, it's just one guy, it's just a one man shop. He's a great guy. I've corresponded to him, and uh, I really just like him. And uh, so I would strongly recommend buying that program, but otherwise you can use your own 3D program. But it's simple to create weight maps that work with this dad's clothing. Don't let it intimidate you, and make sure you put your physics on there because it adds so much. I mean, doesn't that add so much more to, your, uh, to the realism of things? Okay, see you around.